My wife has a marker board that we bought on Amazon and it came with like a, a portable stand, a uh, tripod type of thing. And every time she writes on it, it the, the board ends up like shaking real bad or falls off the stand. It's not working real well. So she asked me to possibly make something that would maybe work better. And I was gonna actually screw the board to the wall, but the board had kind of a warp to it, so that wasn't gonna work. So what I came up with was uh, something that I had made in the past, back during COVID, uh, when our kids were home from school, the schools were closed, we were looking for something to do, and so I made easels and we painted. And so I thought back to the easels I made, and I thought I can probably convert the marker board stand into a similar idea that I used for the easels. Now I got that easel idea, I think on YouTube, but I can't even remember anymore. I, I don't remember how I found it, but you can see in this video that it works really well, and so, I thought it would work on a larger scale. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So keep watching and we'll see how it turns out. So this is the easel I made and it worked great. We set a, a canvas right here on this part and we were able to paint right on the, on the workbench. All I did was I drilled holes I, I cut these two pieces at an angle here, like a dog ear, and then I drilled a hole that went the whole way through everything and just put a dowel through the whole thing. That holds it all together, so it, it this pivots on that dowel. Then um, down here, I made it, I used wing nuts for this, and my intentions were to be able to move this up and down if I needed to. I've actually never moved it, same holes as they always were. And then at the bottom, we just use a string and that stops the easel from kicking out too far. So it gives it a point where it can't go any further. And that is really all there is to it. So these are all one by twos. Um, and then, so it took one by twos, a couple bolts and a dowel is all it took for this. I decided not to use the dowel in the one I'm making, so I'm actually gonna use a bolt with a lock nut on the other end so that it doesn't loosen. I thought it might be a little bit more durable. Um, I don't know if it really matters. And then what I was gonna do was actually screw the marker board to the frame. So it is permanently on there. It was a cheaper marker board anyways. And so that's the plan. We'll see how it turns out. So we began by measuring two inches from the end, making a mark. Then I measured three quarters from the side and made a mark. So that would make that right in the middle of the piece. And then all I did from there was I connected the two lines with the square and that was my mark for my cut. Once I had my mark on both of those, I just took the boards over to my bandsaw and cut the angle off on them. After cutting the angles on the ends of the pieces, I had to line up where the bolt went. Now the bolt I bought was a quarter inch by three inch long bolt. I realized when I got home that the three inch length was not gonna be good enough. So I actually was going to have to countersink both ends to account for the head and for the nut on the other end so that the bolt would reach the whole way through. For measuring the bolt, I measured an inch down from the end, made a mark, and then I turned the board on its edge and found the center point of the board on the thickness side. So that would be three eighths on a three, a three quarter inch piece of wood. Uh, it is important to try to get that as centered as possible because the closer you get to the edges with this hole, the more strength you're going to lose in the piece and the likelihood of it splitting out or breaking is a lot greater. Next, I took my board to the drill press. I used a bit that was, I believe, a 5 16th, just something slightly larger than 
the quarter inch bolt that was going to go through it. Now this hole has to be angled because the legs will flare out from the center. So you actually have to hold the board down on the table using that angle that you cut off previously. This allows for that to go through uh, this and to go through the center piece at a nice flat angle and meet up with the other side in the, at the correct angle as well. I also measured an inch down from the end of the center leg and a 3 8 of an inch in from the side and drilled a matching hole in the center leg as well. So now the bolt is able to pass through all three legs. The only thing we need to do yet is do the counter sinks on the outside of the legs so that the bolt will reach. Now I just got a larger drill bit. This was right around a half inch bit and I made sure to match the angle that the piece is going through the wood. And I did not want to go very deep so I was really careful about not pushing too hard because if you push too hard it could grab and just go and then the whole thing would be ruined. So I took it easy, drilled part way down in on both pieces and, and just tested it and once I got to the depth that I felt it needed then I was able to put the bolt in with the nut on the other end. Now if you choose to do this with a dowel instead this step really would not be necessary. Like I said I was just trying to make it stronger and so I chose to use the bolt. But uh, the dowels have worked fine in the painting easels that we made previously. So. It's kind of up to you if that's how, what you want to do or not. So once you inserted the bolt and attached the nut on the other end, just tighten it down. Now you'll want to test it every once in a while because you don't want to over tighten this and make it so that the leg doesn't swing out freely. You want a little bit of snugness, but just enough to provide a little friction uh, so that it kind of holds, but it, it doesn't just flop open uh, uncontrollably. So you'll have to test it out a few times to get it to the exact amount. Next I just got a cross piece that was going to support the entire thing and just make it a little more rigid and I clamped it on with a clamp and just tried to level it out as close as possible so that I could have something to rest this marker board on that I'm going to put on here. Now if you are using this as a painting easel you're going to want to get it to the height that you want and then you can actually just screw this right to it and you are done after this step. I, however, because I'm using it for a marker board support, had to do a little bit more to it. So it just depends on your use with this easel. Once I had the board where I wanted it, I just marked the back side of it and then went to my miter saw and made the angled cuts and screwed it on. I then set the marker board on the easel. I drilled holes in the metal part of the frame and attached the marker board to the easel so that it was permanently fixed to it. Now this bar marker board had a warp in it so I had to clamp it at the top and it was kind of pulling apart uh, away from the easel at the bottom so it um, took a little bit. You can see as I push on it, the screws, the first screw goes in the whole board flexes and that's why. So once I affixed this to it, it was a lot more sturdy and felt very stable. I did choose to add a support piece at the top of the easel and that was more just to provide a little bit extra support. Just because it had that warp in it, I just thought it won't hurt to add a little bit more uh, to it and it didn't really affect any other part of the marker board functionality. Next I just drilled a 3 8 inch hole on each leg. I tried to make sure that the hole was fairly level with each other and fed a string through it and then just tied each one with a just a basic square knot which for those of you who weren't Boy Scouts that's uh, left over right and then right over left and just fasten it on to make sure that it didn't kick that leg out too far. After that we were done. So there you have it. It worked really well. It's sturdy. My wife can write on it. No issue at all. It will be durable. It lasts quite a while. So thanks for watching. Uh, hit that like and subscribe button and 
Don't forget to watch some videos here on the next screen, and we'll see you next time.